make the most of our time inshallah nahmadu wa nusalli ala rasulihil karim amma ba'd fa'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim rabbi yassir wa la tu'asir wa tammim bil khair so today inshallah we are in our journey through salah and understanding salah we are going to see that there is another prayer which has been prescribed for us and which is a prayer at the time of fear so what is the word al khauf a khauf can be because of lots of things so you can be at the warfare you are at the war place and uh, anything else it could be there so based on the severity and intensity of that there are different prayers prescribed so alhamdulillah for this blessing um, that we are we have uh, you know rasulullah sallallahu guidance in all our matters we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rabbi ja'alni muqim as-salati wa min dhurriyyati rabbana wa taqabbal du'a rabbana filli wa liwalidayya wa lil mu'minina yawma yaqum al-hisab amin ya rabbal alamin and uh, alhamdulillah for this opportunity to go through uh, you know direct ahadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and direct references from the quran and then we can align our life accordingly now salatul khauf is not conditional to journey Okay. And there are many methods of Salatul Khawf offered by Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's proved in various traditions. It can, it, in case of war, it may be offered according to a situation. So again, depending where the enemy is located, depending on what the severity of the uh, the uh, situation is, it can be offered in multiple ways. We see if this fear befalls during the journey, you are in the in the state of moving so we already did what we did already uh, the salah of journey we already did it we did salatul qasr already right so the prayer comprising four rakahs which is zohar asr and isha will be diminuted which means that it will be condensed to two rakahs and half of the troop will perform first rakah behind the imam and the second rakah in the battlefield in the meanwhile the remaining half of the troop will perform first rakah behind the imam and uh, second rakah in the battlefield so where do we get this in the Quran? If you see in Surah An-Nisa, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala talks about it, you know, in, in detail, um, like how in the at the time of fear, at the time of enemy, uh, you're going to take guard of your weapons as well, and how are you going to, uh, you know, perform the prayer. Now, if the fear befalls during station condition. You are at Hadar. You are like you're present at that place. You're not in a travel mode. Then complete prayers will be performed. So no shortening of the prayers at that time. In case of a prayer comprising four rakah, again, which is which ones? Zohar, Asr, and Aisha. So these prayers, half of the troop will perform first two rakah behind the Imam and the second two rakah in the battlefield. In the meanwhile, the remaining half of the troop will perform first two rakah behind the Imam and the second two rakah in the battlefield. So that's how it's going to happen. So what do we see here? We see Abdullah bin Umar who reports Rasulullah led half of a troop for one rukha and the remaining half of the troop remained indulged in war with the enemy. So an Ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma qala salla Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam salat al-khawfi bi ahad al-ta'ifatayn raqatan wa ta'ifat al-ukhra mawaji'ahu aduwi summa ansarafu wa qamu fi maqami ashabihim muqbilina ala al-uduwi wa jaa'a ulaika summa salla bihim al-nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam raqatan summa sallam al-nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam summa qada ha ulai raqatan wa ha ulai Rakatan, Rabahu Muslim. So what do we see here that, you know, after that, the first half of the troop went to face the enemy and Rasulullah led the second half of the troop for one raka and concluded the prayer with salam. Then both the sections of troop performed one raka in the battlefield individually. This is transmitted by Muslim. So again, what we see is that there are different situations in different ways. Sometimes you are facing the Qibla and the, the, the the troops are right ahead of you. Sometimes they are behind you. There's different positioning. So we see another narration that Jabir Ritalanho reports. And Jabir radiallahu ta'ala, Kunna ma'an nabiyya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam idhizati al-riqai wa uqimati salatu fa-salla bi ta'ifatin raqatain thumma ta'akharu fa-salla bi ta'ifati al-ukhra raqatain faqanat lin nabiyya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam arba'u raqa'atin wa liqawmi raqatan mutafaqun alayhi. So Jabir wa ta'ala anhu reports, we accompany the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the battle of riqa. Right, so this is the battle that happened in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The prayer was intended. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam led one part of the troop for two rakah, then his this part went away. Now the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam led the second group uh, for two rakah, and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam offered four rakah while the people offered two. 
with him and this is transmitted by bukhari and muslim so what do we learn from this you know what do we learn from this salah is very important salah is very important subhanallah so even in the time of war you know the salah is importance is there so if we say that as salatu miftahul jannah like miftahul jannah is salah the salah is a key to paradise so can we you know can we afford losing some there so today subhanallah we live in an era in which people leave salah just you know as a fashion statement or just being busy in useless things and they're not worried about salah so let you know there be a time where you are in the war and even at that time you are worried about the salah subhanallah so two things we learn out of this is one that our deen has guidelines for all kinds of situations it's not like just oh this is just 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 no 3 plus 1 is equal to 4 as well so depending on the situation this depending on the severity of what's happening that's how you're going to take action so is khauf only in the battlefield no there are situations at home as well especially for us as women there could be a small kid you know uh, crying that needs attention there could be an elderly person who needs an you know who needs to be taken care of there could be uh, some kind of a cooking that's like really timed wise you need to attend to there could be some wedding ceremony there could be something that you have to you know leave the house and you have to get somewhere in time so we are what we are told through this is that we can adapt depending on what the situation is you're going to adapt to it but the second most important thing is that salah is something absolutely important so even in the time of you know war, it's something of so important now in case of intense fear the prayer may be for, performed in whatever position it's possible this is so amazing that an ibn umar radiyallahu anhuma qala and we're going to see the words of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so inshallah we'll repeat together that qala rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam fi salat al khawfi fa in kana khawfun ashaddun min zalika fa rijalan aw rukbanan rawahu ibn majah so this is so beautiful that abdullah bin umar wa ta'ala anhu anhu reports rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam while describing the method of salat al khawf the salah at the time of fear he said if the fear is intensified you should perform prayer on foot all while riding so whatever the situation is whatever the circumstances is and when you inshallah will be you know if you you know happen to read it in detail sometimes a, uh, there's a warrior who is in a trench so he not going on a sujood but he can bow down and you know he can perform salah accordingly so it's all depends on what the situation is today nowadays we have cameras and there are certain people who are positioned on the cameras even at salatul juma you know you sometimes you have a shooting uh, incidents and some people are in security you know uh, things like that so subhanallah our deen is so flexible and the take away again is that salah is not a part time or some time or no time it should be full time it should be on time and um, uh, the actual thing is that you know we look forward to salah just like we look forward to meeting Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's guaranteed happening. Now prayer may be delayed keeping in view the intensity of the war. So An ibn An ibn Allah An Abdullah radiyallahu anhu qala nada fina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yawman surafa anil ahzab. You remember the battle of Ahzab where the troops had come and they are within their place but the troops have all taken surrounded them, right? So what's happening? Allah yusalliyana ahadul zuhra illa fi baitin qurayza. So Abdullah bin Umar ta'ala anhu reports the day the Prophet ﷺ came back from the battle of Ahzab, he ﷺ declared, every one of you should offer Asr prayer in the locality of Banu Qurayza. So you remember all the incident uh, from the Seerah that they have not taken out down the weapons and you know, the angel came and they were told to go. Now some people offered the prayer in the way lest they should miss the prayer. while some others said we should offer the prayer where we have been ordered to offer by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam although it may get delayed so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not pass any remark about any of the two groups and this is so beautiful if you want to see these words fama annafa wahidam min al fariqain rawahu muslim and today what is our favorite thing to do it's to comment on people or oh, fala must does this at this time they do this at this time and then you know we try to divide people so here we see two groups you know both of them had the valid intentions one wanted to perform as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said at that place no matter the time has gone by or not and the other wanted to perform the salah at the right time and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam did no commenting on both of them meaning that both were 
fine, like both were approved. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those like needles who stitch people together rather than being like those scissors who cut and divide people. So in this, these matters, we should focus on the connection to the creator rather than uh, the way and the procedure and all that. Why? Because based on the intensity, based on whatever the situation is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted us flexibility. The question is that do we take salah seriously? So there are lots of questions that might be coming in your mind regarding this salah, but alhamdulillah, one, we are not on the battleground as females. But again, uh, uh, the question is that how important we take our salah. Subhanallah. And how can a person know that the first question asked on the Day of Judgment will be about Salah, yet still not pray? So one thing which is we are really thankful to, Alham, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that giving us an opportunity to go through these topics and see at least these Salah are there and we are getting to know about it. So Alhamdulillah, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us, uh, you know, apply Salah training. Uh, to organize our life completely. It's a complete systematic life. And in all kind of situations, no matter what life brings in front of us, Salah can be uh, there for us to help us. And just like Allah SWT says in the Quran, was ta'inu, this sabri was Salah. Alhamdulillah. Remember, so you're in the time of war. You, I, there's a fear. And even at that time, you remember the creator who can take care of all those fears. So that gives the strength, subhanAllah. So keep calm and pray Salah on time. Alhamdulillah.